Okay, we're back. So this might surprise a lot of you all, but believe it or not, it's true. It's factual. There is a subset of women who actually hate men. Like hate, hate, hate. As in either want to have you dead or enslaved hate. Like that bad. And how it got this way, I don't really know all the answers, but I do have a few I have a few ideas and I'm going to talk about that today and I'm going to talk about how to identify and avoid these people so they don't fuck your life up or whatever and how to replace them with better people. <laughs> how a fuck about that? My secret to success. Follow me. Get rid of the bad people. Replace them with good people. It's pretty easy, actually. But the thing that most people don't tell you is that those one, two or three so-called bad apples or whatever, they can hold you back from the other three, four, five thousand good ones. No joke. No joke. Because if you really have your heart into a girl, into a woman, you're going to want to listen to what she tells you. When she criticizes you, when she tells you anything, praise, complaint, whatever, you're going to probably take it to heart. And you should, as a good partner, you should actively take an interest and listen to what motherfuckers are saying when they talk to you. But it gets to a point where sometimes, sometimes women that are damaged and entitled and shit like that, they'll just dump a whole lot of shit on you that you have nothing to do with from previous uh experiences or trainings or teachings that are already, you know, they, they existed before you came into their lives or whatever, right? I have noticed that many, many women in this boat, what I want to personally call like basically damaged women, men haters or whatever, they tend to stick together. Yeah, they tend to have mostly all of their friends are pretty much in the same boat. Baby daddy ain't shit. So-and-so don't do nothing for me. So-and-so, he's, he's a terrible man. He's a bad man. He's evil, some will say. That kind of shit. You know, and the reality of things, it might not be the actual case. It might be the total polar opposite or whatever, right? I'm going to tie everything together in this show. All right. Uh, another thing I want to bring up, too, is my experience in women's studies. I actually voluntarily took a women's studies course in college and university at SFSU in the late 90s. Uh, one of the girls I mentioned, actually, my previous ex-best friend of over 20 years sat next to me in a women's studies class, no less or whatever. It turns out she would be one to actually damage me. Probably one of the probably the mo let me just say this shit, all right? She fucking hurt me severely and damaged me and caused me a lot of grief. It took me about three and three years or more of daily therapy and work on myself to figure out what the fuck's going on with my life or whatever. Because when you've known someone for a very long period of time, for more than half of your life, you should probably listen to what they have to say to you until you dissect them and figure out how they got to be, etc. So... A lot of my personal growth had to do with studying, uh, basically, these man-hater type of women. Yeah, for real, for real. I mean, like, under a microscope to figure out what went wrong with them. Therefore, I could figure out why they behaved this way and shit like that towards me, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, it's some major shit, man. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of notepads. It's a lot of research and shit. But it was worth it because I figured out what was wrong and I was able to carry on and fix myself and move on. None of this was possible without me pretty much deconstructing and reassembling the lives and pick, putting together the pieces of these other women's lives, if that makes any sense at all. Reverse engineering, if you may, right? So yeah, man, there's so much shit that I could talk about here. I think this would take hours, but I'm gonna try to summarize it up, all right? Doing my best, right? So I think I started, I started talking about this before the battery pack cut off on another show, but this women's studies class I took in university, right? I'm the only guy in there. It started off with, I think, three guys in the class, and I was the only one that didn't drop it by the end of the semester or whatever. Uh, we did a lot of, uh, watched a lot of brainwashing propaganda books, this, that, and the other, but for the most part, the message was men are bad, men have ruined the world, men exploit women, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Men have the chains holding down everything, everything, or whatever. And women are just the victims and can't do anything, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one of the most meaningful documentaries or stories we watched in class was about, it was a show about some women in like Argentina or something. They were in a sweatshop, basically, uh, 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 
textile shop with sewing machines and shit. So they, they're, they're manufacturing blazers, jackets, and suit for men, I suppose. Probably women, too. But it looked like men's, like, uh, dress suits or whatever, right? So the show went on to go and narrate that, you know, all oh, these poor Spanish women are working long hours in a factory in a sweatshop to make these garments for all these rich businessmen who exploit the population downtown. And this is like the narrative that the documentary was pushing. Right. To me, I just see I just see a bunch of women going to work or whatever. I'm like, they're not they're there voluntarily. No one's forcing them to be there. If they don't want to choose that for gainful employment, they have. A million other options, but they might not be aware of their options or whatever, et cetera, et cetera. I can understand the, you know, there's always a way. Fuck that. I disagree. If you don't want to go and work there, you should move to another city or find some other way of means to support yourself. You know what I'm saying? There's thousands of ways to do this or whatever. So anyway, that a point aside from that fact, th those are the kind. That's the kind of books, movies, and propaganda that myself and the other women in the women's studies class were fed. Um, what result? What the end result of that is like? Well, it sounds like a lot of man hatred to me or whatever. It, it, it produced a lot of entitlement, I would think, because this girl who was my ex best friend at the point who does no longer talk to me, which is fine, which is why I'm doing the fucking video because I don't care anymore. Um, yeah, the girl fucked my head up with a lot of shit, but I could see how I can kind of see how she got to where she was at. Right. So, again, my, my point with the video is basically learn to recognize warning signs to avoid damaged, entitled man hating women. Sounds simple enough, but you know, it might not be, it might not be so obvious or whatever. Right. But those few quotes that I threw out there at the beginning of the show, they all originated from somewhere and I've heard them repeated and parroted by a lot of the girls. Yeah. They almost share the same exact lines. I, it, it's crazy. Yeah. So anytime I hear that kind of shit, I'm like, Oh, I know where this is coming from. Right. Yeah. So you can't let shit like that fuck up your stride, your creativity, your productivity. And, uh, a lot of times, I mean, I've wasted a lot of evenings listening to these type of women rant and vent, so to speak, and spin their wheels basically. You know, they don't realize a lot of their problems are self-inflicted and the ones that aren't, you just got to deal with them. Life is a series of hurdles you have to jump over. Either deal with it or don't deal with it. But don't fucking stick the blame on me. Fuck, <laughs> you know, shit. I'm here. I don't belong here either. So how about that? So anyway, yeah, it's uh, it's a real motherfucker. But had I listened to those two women, um, like I say, none of these other pictures on the wall would exist. My life would be at a dead end and I'd probably be hanging at the end of a rope. You know what I'm saying? It's ridiculous. But a lot of these women, you know, fucking, I just want to say evil, witchy ass women will drive a man to suicide for real. With their bitching, with their nagging, with their complaining, with their entitlement, with their why have you not delivered everything on the fucking planet to me type of attitude already. It doesn't matter if you buy them cars, houses, give them your time, give them your labor, give them your sweat, give them your blood, give them the best years of your life. At the end of the day, you're going to be a low down, dirty motherfucker, no good, son of a bitch, baby daddy, asshole, cocksucker, motherfucker, you know, and that's just the way it is. To her, that's all you are and that's all you ever going to be because she can't, in her mind, accept you for being a man the way you are. Which is ironic because you have no problem accept, accepting them the way they are. So don't let these people dictate railroad or even give you their fucking inputs. You know, I would say it's a very important thing to do what I call uh, examine the proctor, right? It's a good thing to take criticism from people that care about you, right? People that you guys that know me, if I if I. If I throw some criticism at somebody's direction or whatever, generally it's constructive, but it's not, it's definitely not false. And if someone, if someone tells you like, fuck, hey man, that shirt's kind of ugly or something. I mean, you're, you're entitled to your opinion, but a thousand other people might think that, but you're still entitled to wear it as much as you want to or whatever or whatever. Right. But I'm going to tell you if you spilled some ketchup on it. Okay. It is what it is or whatever. Look at it through that point of view, I guess. It might not have been the best example, I suppose, but anyway, <laughs> fuck, I'm ranting, I'm ranting on this here because just some shit happened today and I'm thinking, I'm just thinking about, uh, all the quantum possibilities and outcomes that would have happened to me had I remained in this same situation or whatever. Not everybody has three years to watch videos and go to the library and Amazon and buy all the books and read all the shit that I've gone through and 
figured people out or whatever. Like I said, you got to examine the proctor. If a girl is, for guys here, if a girl is criticizing you excessively, overly harping you on everything, you need to go ahead and examine her in fucking 25 or so different metrics. Does she have all of her shit together? You know what I'm saying? Is she alive, healthy, well, fit, this, that? Is her money right, quote unquote, this, that? Does she have shit going on for her or is her life spiraling out of control, et cetera, et cetera? What has she taken responsibility for? You know, what has she done or accomplished lately? All this shit matters or whatever. Not generally to me, but if you're criticizing me, then it does matter. Basically, if you criticize, if you take the role of criticizing me, I'm going to look at you and say, hold on, before I look at your advice and before I take your advice, let me make sure you got your shit together. If you don't have your shit together, you don't even need to be pointing a finger in my direction, okay? Once you have your shit together, though, I'm going to listen to you very closely and take you very seriously because I'm going to acknowledge that and say, hey, look, this girl put in the work. This girl got her shit together. She's got her shit right and correct. So therefore, her opinion or whatever of me is more valid basically than a hoe that don't have that shit together. If a girl doesn't have her shit together and she's her life is totally just unbound and fucking coming apart at the seams, I'm not going to listen to you because if I do, as I have done before in the past, my life is going to get fucked up in 18,000 different fucking directions. If you guys can't tell by now, I pretty much have my shit together. The pictures on the wall behind me are just vacation pictures and travel, family, video girls and shit like that and whatever. But it's like, hey, it is what it is, man. I kind of think that I manage my time well as far as balancing family, exercise, work, business, travel, pleasure. <laughs> I got my shit together, quote unquote. So I think that you guys should listen to me. If you agree, continue on. I'm going to go to part two here in a second right now. Okay, hold on.